You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When the Lord Jesus came And sin is just a waste of time And evil is just blows my mind I tell ya And everyone will know Adoration is defined as an intense admiration of the Lord Jesus Christ, culminating in our reverence and worship of Him. Our broadcast is dedicated to exploring the many ways we show our adoration in prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, praise, worship, dance, song, missions, outreach, and Bible study. In adoration, we come before our Lord to have frank and compelling conversation with believers who embody the act of uncompromising appreciation for how the Lord provides for us and to reverence the very essence of who He is. We invite our listeners to sojourn with us to the throne of grace each month and continue to draw nigh to our Savior in love through our adoration. just kept 
just pounding in my spirit. And so I am honored tonight to just be the conduit for this program. And we have a wonderful, wonderful evening planned for each and every one of you. I have a very special guest uh, this evening. This is a woman who I have worked with in ministry, and by golly, uh, last year she actually interviewed me along these same airwaves. But tonight, we're going to flip that script just a bit, and instead of me being the one who was being interviewed, I'm going to be the one who interviews her tonight. And before we get there, uh, I want to just say that we have a scripture that is the foundation for this broadcast, and it's out of Revelation 15, 3, and 4. And our scripture reads as thus. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been manifested. That is God's word for tonight. That is the inspiration behind this broadcast. And without further ado, let me tell you about who we have with us tonight. This is a very special vessel of God who I have known for more years than I care to remember, but it's got to be over 20 years. And she has popped in and out of my life. It seems like every time that I've been on some kind of outreach mission, somehow or another, the name of Reverend Pat Randall always seems to pop up wherever I am. And it's just amazing, my beloved, that on tonight I have an opportunity to not only interview, but we really don't want to consider this just an interview, but we're just going to have a conversation that brings adoration unto our Lord. And she has much to share and much to give. But let me tell you a few things just to get things started. She is a psalmist, and she's a praise and worship leader. She's been involved in the deaconess ministry, the ministry of helps, outreach ministry, nursing home ministry, intercessory prayer ministry, and the ministry of the creative arts. She's been a counselor to Christian women uh, through a, a therapy group uh, called Breakthrough to Wholeness. She's a leader of the singles ministry. And not only that, but a full-time administrative church staff member for over 13 years. Along with that, she is one who is also the marketing director for When Christians Speak Talk Radio. She wears many hats. She's very anointed. She's very gifted. And she's very beloved by God and by all those who come in contact with her. Let me get out of the way and let me allow her to tell her own story. Everyone who's listening to the broadcast, I introduce you to none other than Reverend Pat Randall. Hey, Pat. Praise God. Praise God. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, as you were talking about um, my life experiences and the things that I have been involved in and that God has allowed me to participate in terms of ministering to the body of Christ and serving the body of Christ. You know, I just, um, in my 
spirit. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm weeping. I'm emotional because I am so grateful to God because my life could have gone another direction. In fact, it was heading in another direction. But the Lord is faithful. He's, he's faithful. And the wonderful Amen. part is that um, that it doesn't matter if we go off into the wrong direction, if, if we get off track, because it doesn't change our identity. If you've been chosen, if you've been called by God, it was from the very beginning, from the foundation of the world. And Amen. I'm grateful that God would love me so much that he would send his only begotten son and just redeem me from the kingdom of darkness because that's where we all are before we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, you may um, want to be in denial about it because, it I mean, it's not a wonderful-sounding thing saying that, yes, I was a card-carrying member of the kingdom of darkness, but in reality... We all were until we came into the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 And, you know, I, I, I really, you know, um, I don't even know how I end up being the guest on his, <laughs> uh, on your first uh, episode here with adoration, glory to God. Um, you know, I really don't enjoy talking um, a lot about about myself. Um, other than to testify of the the goodness of of God and the faithfulness of God, and if anything in my life, anything that I've gone through, anything that the Lord has by His grace has caused me to overcome, if that will be an encouragement to you to to give uh, the body of Christ um, a. Um, and in, uh, to encourage and to uh, restore you, uh, I make myself available. I make myself well, you know available, what? transparent. Yes. Amen. I, I appreciate that. And I want to tell you, because I, I never shared this with you, Pat. And, and, and by the way, can we just be Pat and Mac tonight? Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> okay, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Great. I prefer it. Praise God. The, the reason that you were the one that God placed in my, my heart for this first broadcast is because of the comfort level that you gave me uh, during the interview process and to just allow me to be able to expand on my testimony and things that I'm doing uh, as far as the ministry is concerned. And I wanted for uh, you to be the first guest because without you giving me the opportunity to come and share, we probably wouldn't be on this uh, broadcast tonight. So, you know, this is by holy intervention, really. It has nothing to do with me, and it really has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with God's design. Yes, yes. (laughs) <laughs> and so yes. what I would like for you to do, my sister, is yes. uh, to just open us up in a word of prayer, and we'll flow right into whatever God has for us to say or to share tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we praise you and we exalt your holy name. Hallowed be your name. You are holy, and there is none like you. We thank you. We thank you this evening. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to to share the the living word with those who are on the air with us tonight. We thank you that you sent your that he gave his life for us, 
that you so loved us that you would send the only begotten Son. We thank you that when he left this earth, that you then sent us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and to come alongside of us. The Holy Spirit, we're asking you to lead and guide and direct this broadcast that we will say what the Lord wants us to say this evening. You know everyone who is going to be listening tonight. And it's the ministry of God's love that changes lives. So we thank you for this opportunity on the broadcast. We thank you for this show, Adoration, with Evangelist Matt. We thank you, God. You already foresaw this moment. And we thank you. We thank Thank you for bringing it to pass. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen and glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. (laughs) On that keyboard, uh, glory (laughs) to God. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we believe that in adoration, uh, it opens us up to be free in Christ, to just be liberated from the usual boundaries that radio may have or TV may have or whatever may have that, um, you know, we just want to have an atmosphere of worship, even in the midst of our conversation, to just be able to flow and to just share Christ. Because we don't know who's out there, Pat, that, you know, needs to hear what you have tonight. And so... I'm just going to just get this thing started because I, I I just want you to be able to just freely share. So I was looking through your testimony, and I noticed that you referenced places, darkness, or places where you knew that you were maybe out of pocket with the Lord, and I don't know why that hit me in the midst of everything else because my only exposure to you has been with you freely exhorting the Lord and proclaiming his holy (laughs) name. (laughs) You know, that's the only path I know. But I also know that with everyone who is really serious about ministry, that it not always like that. And even if you were brought up in the church environment, which you were, um, I know that there's still obstacles. And I just want you to, for a moment, just share some of the obstacles that you had and then how the Lord helped you to overcome them. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you know, um, starting from my birth into this world, um, some people are blessed to have the opportunity of being raised by two parents or even one parent is a blessing to be raised by 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 um, um, just a parent. You know, there is... Um, Nothing like knowing um, the love, that's the introduction into this world, is the love of our parents. And it prepares us for uh, being introduced to the love that God has has for us. And my uh, father, um, who um, was a pastor um, in the Amy Zion Church, he... Uh, while my mother was carrying me, she hadn't even delivered yet, but he was he was a carpenter, and he was on his church uh, repairing the steeple, and he fell off, and uh, after that injury, he never fully recovered and eventually died. And my mom, who had already had a pretty um, a traumatic life, 
to begin with. And so now here she is with three children, and uh, and her husband is gone, and she had been married before, and that marriage had failed. And she had um, 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 the this problem m- mentally. She was always, there was always something, uh, some sort of spirit over her that she her she was mentally uh, unstable, and so things could uh, easily set her off. And in challenges, it, it was like she was unable to stand underneath the weight of the challenges that can hit us in this world. So she ended up having a nervous breakdown. And so I was raised by my grandparents, and and you know, so I, I was in left in a godly household but of course they were much older and so I was raised between two households Max and so you know I never realized the impact of being raised between two households that were just uh, very much um, in contrast to one another Uh, one was a godly um, household and the other one was more of a secular type household I mean it wasn't a lot about um you know, being raised with God and going to church on a regular basis. Um, we went to church once in a while. But in that environment, in that second environment, because I, I was I was born in Montgomery, Alabama, and <clears throat> so and with my grandparents in Montgomery, I would stay with them two, three years, and then I would be sent to um, – to an aunt in New York. So, and at that time, I grew up in segregation. So, you know, I was going from a segregated environment to a desegregated environment. So, that alone was a contrast. But while I was in New York as a young, as a very young child, probably around three, four years old, um, I um, was not protected and ended up being sexually molested. And that actually started a pattern in my in my life, and it opened up a lot of doors, which the enemy meant, because, you know, that's his whole plan, is to circumvent the purpose, your purpose for being born into the earth. And that, that, that whole experience spun me off into, and if, you know, which is why I did um, the Breakthrough Group, with yes. um, women who've been abused or sexually abused or, or or verbally abused because I I can identify with it I understand what it does and when it happens to you as a child uh, you really begin to question your identity which is what the enemy wants he wants Absolutely. us to always question who we are and so my identity was in question and I I I moved. Through the, the through my young years with guilt and 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 shame and not being able to talk to anyone about it and it just led into promiscuity um, you know uh, in my young adult years while I was in college and um, you know so I was just going I was just in a place of confusion I you know I started doing drugs you know I was um, uh, I didn't get into, you know, shooting up or anything like that, uh, like heroin, but, I mean, it could have been because, you know, I was doing some other things that, you know, if I had a, continued to head in that direction. But, you know, the blessing is, Matt, that all while I was going through that period, that God would send these angels that I now realize are angels Praise that God. would deliver a message. I remember being in a bar in a place where I shouldn't be with a person who was doing all sorts of illegal things and you know all sorts of illegal ventures and um and I was sitting at the bar and 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 this guy went off to talk to someone about some kind of deal he was brokering and a stranger walks up to me while I'm sitting at the bar and he says what are you doing here so, well, first, okay. first he first he didn't he didn't. I looked at first he said hello, 
And I looked at him. I said, hello. And I just thought, okay, here we go. What's the pickup line, right? Because I thought he was, right. you know, I was young. I was like, you know, what, 19, 20 years old. And, uh, and so he says to me, what are you doing here? And that really threw me off. I'm thinking, like, I said to him, I mean, what kind of question is that? What do you mean, what am I I'm doing here, you know? And the interesting thing is I was doing my best to try and fit in an environment where I really didn't fit. Inside, I knew I didn't fit. Okay. But because I was so screwed up in my head, if I can say the word screwed up on Christian broadcasting, <laughs> uh, I was so, you know, messed up in my head that, you know, I was trying to fit into places where deep down inside I knew I didn't fit. And this man spoke that way. He said, you don't belong here. Wow. And then okay. he walked away. And um, and then I never saw him again that evening. It was just, he was just, that was just that, that moment. But it was the Lord speaking, speaking, dropping a message, you know, all along the way. And if we are... If we are listening, even in the midst of dark times and when you're confused about things, but if you take the time and listen, you'll hear the Lord speaking, even in the midst of that. Because I've heard so many testimonies of people uh, stoned out of their minds, you know, after shooting up, and, and they begin to pray because they hear the voice of God. And so they respond to that, and and that's what I love about the Lord. It doesn't matter where we are, he will come for us. He Amen. will come for us, Mac. And I just Amen. thank the Lord that I didn't stay in that environment too long. I was there a couple of years, but I, I really knew that I really didn't fit, and I was trying to find out where is my place. And that's how I end up getting into show business, because I always loved singing. I always loved okay. acting. I remember growing up as a kid watching all of the, you know, the song and dance movies when they were doing musicals. And, of course, by the time I was grown, um, they were no longer doing those movies, but they were still doing musical theater. So I thought, oh, you know, I'll do the theater. And so... Um, you know, and that's a whole nother environment when you get into, you know, uh, the entertainment in industry, and that's a whole different, another kind of devil going on in, in that in that particular <laughs> industry. <laughs> well, Amen. You know, I'm aware I, of that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Matt. I do. But you know, the thing is, is that um, um, the reason I was drawn to that because basically. Those gifts and talents that the Lord had placed in me were actually for the kingdom. But I was still outside of the kingdom. Even though I had grown up in church, and, you know, when I was growing up in church, um, you know, this whole Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, there weren't too many of them, I, I, none that I knew of. And, uh, you know, when you would leave, when I would leave the church, when I, especially when I was a young adult, I would leave the church and, and I would think, like, I can't do anything with that, with that message. So why am I going? You know, I'd be out clubbing all night, but because I was in the habit of going to church, I would get up and I would go to church. But then Amen. I hear this message, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything I could use. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. And, uh, <laughs> and I, you know what I'm saying? I understand. I do. And, and, and <laughs> I mean, it really wasn't teaching you anything. And it was all about the choir. I mean, it had a really good choir. You know, the choirs would sing and stuff, you know, but there was nothing that you could, you know, um, hold on to and bring back into your life. And so yeah. I stopped going. And as a result of um, not going, because I was also in the, um, had started studying uh, at an acting school in preparation of going into the entertainment industry, uh, you know, in that industry, people believe, you know, they people are chanting, people are, you know, Scientologists, you know, just free thinkers. And so, you know, I, 
you know, I read that book. You remember the book Think and Grow Rich? Oh, absolutely. Napoleon Hill. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I read that book, and I thought, well, you know what? This is something I can use. It's practical, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and the stuff I was hearing in the church, and then I, I read uh, Bhagavad Gita and some of the other Eastern things, and I just start thinking like, yes, yes, I need to take charge of my destiny here. So I need to start Amen. with my mind. And, Amen. you know, and that's another trick of the devil. So when I meet people who are into that sort of thing, I understand. You know, they're looking for truth. And if you've ever been disappointed by um, by Christianity, by being in the wrong church or, you know, being under uh, teaching that is very uh, condemning and, and, and you just feel like you're not ever, you're not getting anywhere with those messages, okay. you know. You just come out feeling worse about yourself. But, I mean, when you went in there, you was feeling bad about who you were. And then when you come out, you're feeling even worse. And um, so I understand people who end up getting into those Eastern thoughts. And even now, um, you know, I remember this big thing on Oprah with The Secret. Remember that? Yes, Um, yes. Yeah, and it was all, but it's all about, you know, it's all about this mental thing, you know. uh, You know, um, I just think a thing and I, you know, but all of it was eliminating Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, Pat, I'm telling you, uh, it is so amazing how your testimony uh, mirrors my own in many ways. And and I just want to, just for a moment, before we take a little break, um, I I just want to say that I'm going back to when you were at that bar. uh, And that, that touched me so much because that's when I got my own realization, revelation that something is askew here, something is, is out of place here. And, and, and just very quickly, I, I remember being at a bar and I was sitting there and I'm probably in my early 20s and uh, there was a woman there that was sitting there and, and she was drinking and she was probably in her 40s but looked a lot older and looked really uh, beaten down by life. And I remember the two addictions that I had, one being the the addiction to alcohol and then the sexual addiction. And, you know, my move would have been to make a move on her because I would have thought that she was going to be easy and right for the picking. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had my own Holy Ghost experience saying, Matt, what are you doing? (laughs) You know, yeah. you're better than this. You're more than this. I created you to be greater than this. Amen. And, and, and Amen. I'm sorry, I just had to go there because because I, I, I really relate, and I relate to even seeking out the other um, uh, religious avenues in order to get to truth. And and I remember trying all those. So I'm, you don't know how you blessed me already just in that uh, small uh, sharing that you've just uh, done with us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yes. You know, Pat, I think at this point what we'll do is we're going to take a short adoration break, and then on the flip side we'll continue with our conversation. Is that fair enough? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, and Live 365 with 24-7 Gospel Music. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. 
There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he Welcome back to Adoration. We are again blessed to have with us Reverend Pat Randall. And Pat had just, uh, before we took our break, she had um, just talked about kind of really her beginnings and, and coming into her not only acceptance of Christ, but also the call of Christ. And, and if I may, Pat, I want to mm-hmm. share something uh, real quick and then you can kind of uh, fill in the gap because, again, I I experienced you uh, on the streets of D.C., Maryland, and um, yes. uh, it just seemed like every time that there's some kind of an outreach event, somehow or another I would look the other way and here comes Pat Randall, uh, just uh, giving exhortation, encouragement. Can you t- share with us just for a moment, how do you get to that place where you become an encourager to the body of believers and even to the those who are out there who are still lost, needing a Savior? How do you do that? Amen. Praise God. That's a, a a good question. Well, you know, um, it is the love of God. The, the The Lord has loved me in such a way. I mean, despite all the things that um, I have been involved in and just the lifestyle that I was living, um, that he would love me the way he has loved me. And I know that some people, um, you know, if you haven't been out there doing a bunch of different things, sometimes you you get under the illusion that, uh, well, I wasn't that bad. But, you know, we were all um, dead, okay? We were dead in our sin. But... For me, because of all the things that I had gone through and and the shame and the guilt and 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 that he would love me the way he loved me, you know uh the scripture says, "He who is forgiven much loves much, yeah. and God was merciful to me because even even after i I got saved, Matt, you know some things dropped off, but everything didn't drop off. And so I was still caught because there were strongholds in my life. Okay. And I could be rolling along and doing well, and then the next thing I know, I'm back at it again. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I do. And so to, 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 to see that even, even after I'd given my life to him, or after I admitted that I needed him as a savior, that I still was not fully all the way in because I was, I guess, because I was still broken and there were just things in me, and I would just end up, you know, going back, uh, you know, like a dog returning to his vomit. You know, you just kind of fall yes. back in 
into it, you know, and then you go through the guilt trip and, Lord, I'm sorry, and the whole thing. But I saw the faithfulness of God during that, how merciful he was. And I thought, like, you know, Lord, you know, I've accepted you, and you've forgiven me, and yet I'm still not living this life that I know would be pleasing to you. But yet he kept on accepting extending his mercy and his compassion. And as a result of experiencing that, that's all I want to be able to do is extend that same mercy, that same compassion, and the encouragement to others to know just how great the Father's love is for us, Mac. Amen. I mean... You know, uh, you hear people saying that, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're in sin, that you know God's not going to hear your prayers. But listen, He heard your prayers when you were a sinner, <laughs> when you didn't know Him, and you cried out, "Lord, I need you." If you're real, uh, I need you to to show yourself to me. You were a sinner then, and He heard your prayer. How many times did He hear? Um, the Israelites, when they cried out, when they were in bondage in yes. Egypt, they were worshiping other gods too. Yeah. I mean, when they, yes. when Moses went up to the mountains and they they built that golden calf, it wasn't something they had just it just popped up as an idea. It was they just reverted back to stuff that they were doing when they were in Egypt. Absolutely. The scriptures tell us that they were worshiping idols while they were there. But God heard them when they cried out, and he sent them a deliverer. Mm, mm, mm. So God is better than we could ever imagine, and we put limits on his compassion. We put limits on his love. It says his mercy endureth forever. Yes, yes. He's slow to anger, and he's rich. In, in mercy, rich in loving kindness. Mm. And so all I want people to know is just how good Daddy is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, uh, we have talked uh, off air about similar things and, and that it seems like the the body is, is, is always, always has... Christ in this this box, you know, and yeah. and like that that everything is like by a formula, and and like you know, I think it's it's become so conditioned in the minds and hearts of mankind that we can't see that there's a whole nother uh, atmosphere, a whole nother reality that's beyond what we experience in this physical presence. And Amen. and I think that's what you're really speaking to because you know, in Christ there is liberty and so if 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 he has made us free, then we should be truly free indeed. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. You get, you, it you says get me he loved now. us <laughs> love he loved us while we were yet enemies. Enemies of God. Yeah. yeah. We were enemies of God. And he loved us. Yeah. That should tell you something right there. I mean, we weren't doing good when Jesus came into the earth. He sent him because we were lost, but yet he wanted to save us. Mm. Mm-hmm. That, he wanted that is to a powerful save us. message. He saw mm. some value in our lives because he created us for himself. Mm. Yes. Yes. And and so, you know, as I was, you know, thinking about and preparing for our conversation tonight and I, I looked at the many areas of ministry that you have been involved with. I mean, you know, I thought that I was busy, but obviously I need to take a page out of your book uh to, to <laughs> just... <laughs> uh, sometimes Mac too busy. You know, I had to learn, I had to learn, um, I had to learn that too, you know, because what happens is 
you know how they say um, in, in the Word of God, it says that the uh, harvest is plenteous, but the labor laborers are few. And yeah. uh, you know, even um, you know, because when I worked at um, full time in ministry, I worked for a well known ministry. It was huge. Okay, thousands okay. of members, thousands. But there was still this small number of people who actually did the labor that were consistent. Even though you had thousands of people, you had hundreds of laborers Amen. who put their hands to the plow. And as a result uh, of that kind of environment, sometimes you can over in yourself because you see all the things that need to be done. You see you see the needs of people and you have a heart's desire, you know what I mean, to, to fulfill the need. But the one thing that where I am now after over probably close to 30 years of being in the Lord is that um, he's teaching me and I'm still learning because we never we never become you know we never quite attain we're always learning is that uh, that I need to ask him first you know I need to be led okay. by him you know he said to me you know what there's always a good work that you can put your hand to he said but when I direct you to do something it's a most excellent work amen Amen. And that's better than Amen. a good work. A most excellent yes. work is better than a good work. <laughs> I hear you. Yes. And Amen. so being able to learn how to to um, uh, walk by the Spirit, you know, and we all start off, you know, uh, with the works thing and trying to labor for God. I just want to serve God because he's been good to us. So, you you know, you feel like you want to give back. You want to, you know what I mean? You want to work and and do the work for the Lord and you want to be his hands and his feet on this on this earth. And, and but um, we have to get to a point where we're literally moving with God so that we're only touching the things he's telling us to touch. We're only speaking the things he's. We're hearing him. That he's telling us to speak. We're only going where he's telling us to go. Amen. And learning how to move um, in, in the spirit with God. Right now, I'm studying how to to really move into that place where I'm in friendship with God. Amen. You know, cause, you know, friendship can, is a very intimate thing. And with friendship, you know, you can influence a friend. If you're really close to a friend, you can influence a friend. And so I was listening, actually, to a teaching uh, about um, David, how David was a man after God's own heart. And he wasn't a perfect man. He, he, and, and first of all, he didn't even have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of him. But he had a heart for God, and he understood God's heart. So yeah. whenever he messed up, he knew he could cry out for mercy. He would go before the Lord. He didn't run and hide somewhere from God. He would go before the Lord and throw himself on his mercy, Amen. you know, repenting and, yes. and, and acknowledging his guilt and his sin. But he understood that that was the one place he could go. You know, I've sinned uh, not against man, but against you and you alone. He understood what that meant. Wow. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. And, yes. and, and, and yes. the other thing that I had never thought about was the fact that when David built this tabernacle, it was not the tabernacle that uh, God had instructed Moses to build. David came up with a whole new design because it was one big room with the ark in there and everybody would come in there. You know, before there was the Holy of Holies and only one guy could go, priest could go in, and he had a rope tied around him. And God allowed him to do that. 
And I believe because David had a, because he was close to the heart of God, he could see into the future. God would show him some things of how it would be. We would no longer have to go behind the curtain. Absolutely. And the worship in in, in David's tabernacle was 24-7. Absolutely. Always going on. Yes, yes. You know, it it reminds me um, of, I always think about uh, the Apostle John and what kind of love and what kind of devotion it would take that the Holy Spirit would guide his hands to write the book of Revelation. Yes. To you, you, you understand, yes. and, and, and even in his own gospel, where he couldn't even refer to himself by name, but he was just the disciple whom Jesus loved. You know, yes. the humility of that, the faithfulness of that. You know, even the courage of that. You know, mm-hmm. to 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 step outside of the comfort zone and to to boldly go before the throne of grace in adoration. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. I, and the fact that he wrote it, that's courageous because that revelation, if people are still people are still trying to interpret and understand that revelation. And he had the boldness and the courage to pen it. Yes, yes, Leave indeed. Leave it for us. Yes, indeed. But you know, because, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, some people had to have thought he was crazy. <laughs> these beasts That's and these true. heads and the horses riding and the this and the, the scrolls and the candles and the, you know, I mean, you got a whole lot of stuff going on in Revelation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to just be the one who God had picked out to yes. to to be the, the human writer of this holy revelatory book is just uh it's 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 mind boggling if you really uh thought about it. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, look, I have I have to transition a bit because believe it or not, we're running out of time here. Oh, and I can't I believe that. that we've almost gone through the hour. <laughs> Listen, it happens quick, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But I want you to just touch uh, as we close out. Um, there are two areas, and if you can kind of condense it and kind of just share a little bit. You are not only the uh, director of marketing for When Christian Speaks uh, Talk Radio, but you are also the producer of your own program called Declaring the Finished Work. And then along with that, you also – uh, have a ministry through uh, to encourage you greetings, which is a greeting card ministry. Can you just touch on that uh, before we close out? Yes. To encourage you greetings actually came um, out of, I had actually gone through um, a bout with breast cancer. Okay. And some years ago before um, my husband passed, um, in actually 1989, so I was like about 39 years old when, when suddenly I became a widow. But we were doing greeting cards, and we were, uh, we were doing secular cards. We had been doing Kwanzaa cards and some other um, um, just positive message type cards, and we were about to go into a Christian greeting card line when he became ill and he went home to be with the Lord. So I would have never thought that I would even be touching. Uh, you know, I just thought that vision had died when he died. You know what I mean? So Amen. you just never know what God, God's plan is. And um, and so um, he spoke to me. He says, I want you to uh, do greeting cards again. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. It's just too hard to be an entrepreneur. I'm not going, I'm, you know, and, and you know, before, you know, I had my husband. He was an artist. He was a graphic designer. And, you know, I wrote message, the messages. But, you know, what about the art? And I was just, I just, you know, I came up with all kinds of reasons why I shouldn't even be doing that thing. And... Okay. 
up. And the Lord just kept bringing it up, and and I finally relented. And when I said, okay, Lord, I'm just going to trust I'm just going to trust you. And let me tell you, it just, everything just started to pour out. The messages, even the graphic design, something that um, I didn't have a lot. I could draw, but I didn't have a lot of experience handling um, graphic design. And stuff just started to flow. And the Lord was showing me that if I tell you to do something, it ain't going to be that difficult because I'm going to be doing it. Amen. You know, I'm going to be doing it through you. And then with declaring the finished work, uh, praise God, my brother Ray Rose. I know you out there listening, my brother, the founder of (laughs) We Talk Radio. In fact, we're coming up on our three-year anniversary this month. So, woo-woo, we'll be celebrating that. God is in faithful. But he invited me on as a guest, like you. Uh, I I was invited as a guest, and and it was a a noonday show on Thursdays, but it was mostly about prayer. It was a prayer time. And we we come on, we'd share the word and go through the scriptures and prayer, and and he invited me to come back, and I came on a couple of times, and then he says that, you know, you should should take over this, 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 this particular broadcast. I was like, take over the broadcast. But even though I wasn't ready, I knew that that was the next step for me. Okay. And so I said yes, even though I felt ill-equipped because I thought, okay, now I got to prepare, I got to be ready for a broadcast every week, have something to say to the people of God. Some, yes. I got to encourage them to do something, you know what I mean? And uh, but what it did was um, he just showed me if if I just trust him that the Holy Spirit would just flow. He would tell me what to speak about. He would show me people to invite to be on the broadcast. I mean, he would just do everything if if I just be a vessel. My just God. be a vessel. My God. You know, which is a difficult thing to do because you know it's hard for us just to be, to be a vessel. You know, you mean uh, uh, should not be doing this and should not do this and should not do this. And you know, we have all our ideas, and you know, I could be great when it comes to planning and making ideas and things like that. And nothing is wrong with planning and things, but you know, you plan loosely, knowing that God can come and shift and move things because He's the supreme being. He's the divine author and finisher of all things. And so you just have to relent to that and just become a child, you know, a child in his hands and trust him and knowing that he he loves you and that he, the whole plan is for us to keep uh, expanding in who we are. You know, because we don't really, that's the other thing is, is that I would have never saw myself doing um, radio. But what it's showing me is that I don't really know who I am. God knows who I am. (laughs) So I need to be listening, I need to be listening to the one who who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. (laughs) You know, I mean, he really knows, he really knows what he's placed on the inside of us. We have to trust that. So I've been blessed through the broadcast. I've met some wonderful, wonderful people, and I, I was so glad when we reconnected. And so, and I was able to invite you on as a guest because we also do a special episodes. So God was yes. good. He was good. He was good. He was good. So I, I'm grateful. So don't be afraid. Whoever's listening and need to hear this. Don't be afraid. God knows who you are. So if he asks you to step out on something and you're feeling a little fearful about it, don't worry. He knows what he's placed in you, and you will be able to do because he's called you to do it, and he's placed everything that you need to do it on the inside of you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pat, Thank you so much. This has been an honor and a privilege. Uh, I cannot tell you how 
excited I am to have you on the broadcast, and it won't be the last time. (laughs) Amen. Um, Amen. I know that our time is short, um, but I just want to let our audience know that, again, uh, Adoration will be on air every third Monday of each month, and we just encourage you to listen, to learn, to receive, And as Pat has said, don't be afraid because God is not the one who has given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Love you. Love you too. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So childish in my So lost in my way I spend my time Believing what the servant said Then